Hey there. So, um, yeah, my name is Andrew, and uh, today I'm starting one of what I hope will be a series of videos where I'll be talking with uh, different people about uh, writing. I suppose with a, an element of, you know, what kind of their, their general kind of background in writing or the kind of stuff they work on. But also, I suppose, looking particularly kind of at um, unpublished writing in terms of stuff out there that people have written that maybe they um, haven't put out there yet or that they, they might be looking to publish or perhaps for some reason they've, they've decided not to publish a particular thing. And I guess kind of future um, stuff they're, they're planning to write as well. Um, so yeah, so this is for the, the inaugural video. I have uh, Alan Navarro with me here. So uh, yeah, Alan, would you like to introduce yourself and just talk a little bit about uh, your writing, et cetera? Yeah, so uh, my name is Alan O'Farrell, um, mid-30s, and I suppose I know Andrew going back a long time. Um, we both sort of, I think we similar enough taste in literature, read similar books, uh, so it's good to talk to him about it. Um, but I suppose I've written some things and I've done sort of journalism internship, and I think it's a good question, sort of, one, are you writing anything, and two, have you tried to get it published, you know, and the obvious follow-on from that then is, uh, why haven't you tried or why aren't you trying if you're, if you're not um, but yeah so I've, I've done some journalism like a four-week internship uh, years ago and then I sort of tried writing short stories and then I've had, I've had some poems published um, but yeah it's an interesting one so I suppose Andrew if you want to go ahead with the next question I suppose you, you probably thought of a few things for this I'm sure quite yeah I mean would you like to take like a particular example of, of are there any pieces you've written that um you kind of decided against publishing or were there any pieces you had particular trouble in getting published that you were kind of particularly determined to push forward? Yeah, good question. So um, just, I suppose, what I have had published before would just be things with friends in the writers group in Valley Fermat. Uh, so Declan Lynch is a surname. Um, Declan Geraghty, sorry. He's a sort of friend of mine from the writers group. and He's set up an anthology and he had something published. And then Dublin City Council has a literary journal as well, just because it's the library writing groups. Um, so I've had stuff published in that. And it's a weird thing because I think I kind of, I got them published and I'm still not sure how I feel about having gotten it done. Uh, it's a very strange thing that like, it does feel like I've put an awful lot of effort into it. And then I'm kind of going, Jesus, is this being received? And like, is it being received in the way I want it to be received? Or how do I feel about it? So I suppose sort of that's that's been my experience and I'm kind of, I have work that I think I'm happy enough, I, I suppose I would regard as finished, but I'm just sort of sitting on them. And I suppose actually talking through this might help me get to the, the bottom of why I am sitting on it and why I'm not putting it forward for publication. Could you give me an example of, of, of one of those pieces you're sitting on? Like, what's it about? And just, you, you write poetry mostly, is it at the moment, is it? Or Yeah, so I've written poems recently I suppose that would be the, the most sustained thing I've done I also do some sort of sub stack writing which is kind of you know trying to do opinion pieces um but I'm not sure how seriously I take them like I kind of I think they're interesting and it's an idea as I want to pursue but I don't know how uh enduring I sort of want them to be like you know it's, it's kind of hot takey stuff um but yeah I suppose sort of the, the work I'm doing I suppose is kind of the thing that I'd be interested in is suburban experience which is sort of you know just people who aren't quite it's not very cosmopolitan it's also kind of boring it's, it's philip lark and stuff i suppose basically um without the finesse and the gift uh, facility and um, but i suppose sort of some of the things that i've done is sort of just writing about sort of uh, pilates classes or sort of issues with back pain and stuff like that it's all very boring or going to weddings sort of humdrum stuff um so yeah i suppose it, it is sort of in terms of theme and material, it is kind of very Philip Lark and stuff. It's kind of, yeah, just suburban life, I think, is the way I describe it. Um, and I suppose it's kind of, it's a strange thing. That will be part of the reception, which is, I know everyone likes Philip Larkin, but I think that people generally tend to distrust the cynicism. And I think that sort of, I would have a cynical edge in a lot of my stuff. So I think that's sort of something that I'd be reluctant to, I think that could be part of the reason why I'd be reluctant to publish it. Um, it's just not a, a tone that people are kind of that keen to hear these days, I think. It's interesting, yeah, in terms of reception, like what, and do, do you get a particular feeling people aren't kind of receptive to, are there particular places where you hear that people are kind of less receptive to that? Not really. I think it's kind of, it's 
a good question, actually. Generally, sort of people are very positive. My experience is that most writers groups are just generally very supportive and enthusiastic, unless you're uh, a nutcase, really, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I think sort of the way I feel it is just, it's looking at the work my stuff rubs shoulders with. So in the other collections, it's kind of, it's, it's different and it's not as it's not as earnest or as openly sincere, I think. Um, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why I am reluctant to get it published. Um, yeah, I just feel like I'm kind of, you know, the crank at the back, in the back of the poetry collection, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of, I think the, that that's, it's not anything overt or anything like that. I just think that it doesn't quite fit in, you know, but I think that's common okay. for aspiring literary types. That's interesting because maybe, well, maybe I'm, I'm not really in the, the poetry. I read some poetry, but I'm not in a poetry scene or I'm not very active in reading or writing poetry. But, you know, I'm, I mostly work in novels, but I would have felt like there's a lot of, um, I would have felt that there's quite a lot of kind of kind of dark writing or writing that looks kind of darker themes, but maybe that's not the same thing as cynicism. Yeah, I think that it's a good point, actually, but I think... The, I mean, the subject material is often quite dark, but maybe there's a certain... It's, it's very dark. I think the, the big difference is my stuff, I, I tend to prefer, I, I tend not to think of it as being obviously confessional. Like, I'm definitely trying to work through some things, I've, some experiences I've had, but I'm just, I, th- I feel like I'm a bit more reluctant to put myself front and center, you know? Um, like, I suppose it's sort of, it's all very, Sylvia Platt and Ted Hughes, I think, are probably the two major influences these days in terms of contemporary poetry. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm not 100% on that, but that's my general impression. And I think it is kind of quite confessional and I just, I'm a bit reluctant to do that. I think it's just, it's too easy. <laughs> it's, so, what do you mean too easy? Like, I, I just think, I suppose it's kind of, for any literature, I think fiction or poetry, it, it, there should be an element of irony, I think, where the whole thing is just unsta- unstable. Mm. Or you're presenting yourself as sort of just this confessional, tortured artist, you know, who has all these wild emotions. It's just, you know, it's kind of when you're sitting down, you're trying to sort of mediate the experience through a sort of a new way. Mm. I think the sort of the wild emotions, you know, are kind of, yeah, it's a bit, it just feels like it would be too easy for me to do that, to do to sort of write these sort of Kurt Cobain esque lyrics, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. My own work, so I work in kind of novels more so these days, but like, um, yeah, often some of some of the subject matter can be very dark, or some of the um for, for I think I I, I know you were uh, be re- reading a novel I was working on the stigma play, but the some of those the scenes within it in their own right are very intense, but it is a very metafictional work, so that it's very much about um how scenes are constructed or can be used to manipulate people, etc. Um, but I think yeah, that sounds kind of interesting for your your own experience, yeah, about um. Yeah, trying to have a certain level of t- detachment or not trying to put yourself across a, a tortured artist if you're living a particular type of suburban experience in your own life. Yeah, I suppose it just feels like a lot of poetry just to me sounds like it's people's diary entries. Mm. And I think it's going to, that, that is just a bit easy, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's uh, they're representing their own experience, like they're staying in their lane now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've missed the point, I think. <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, no, the, the, that sort of metafictional kind of thing is quite interesting. But I suppose the I suppose I suppose a lot of the time I spend my time in terms of trying to make submissions for for novels and things. There's a particular way that that works in terms of approaching, say, literary agents, a, agents or um, maybe small indie independent kind of presses, etc. But I suppose within with uh, getting published with poetry is that that might be a slightly different um, process like a book of poetry for example would be I've heard that a lot of the time it's almost like you have to be invited yourself to to publish a collection yeah my my understanding that that's basically it I suppose you submit to some of the journals um, and they will generally invite you there's only a few main poetry publishers I think Um, Mm. And I think a lot of it's sort of regional press, but yeah, it is basically you're invited once you've submitted to the relevant journals. But I think another thing as well is that sort of, it's just, I think you do kind of, there's quite a networking element to it as well. I think you have to be sort of on people's courses and things like that. And just, yeah, it's just, again, it's kind of not really what I would like to do. I think a lot of it's sort of, I, I do kind of get the impression that a lot of 
poetry does involve going on courses and things like that and sort of networking like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I suppose it's kind of, it's, it's interesting because there is like a lot of just, this is kind of what I was talking about before I think we recorded. There is a sense in which there's a bottleneck. There's a lot of stuff that's good enough, I think, to be published, but just people aren't putting themselves forward for it. Uh, and then it's, I suppose it's kind of how do you decide what to put a marketing budget behind, which is probably a bit more fictional, you know? Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting just thinking about what the publishing industry is, like I suppose what values is it trying to promote, I think. Is it trying to promote any specific values? Um, but I haven't really gone that far down that road, like really to be honest. Yeah. I know within the publishing industry, they're trying to diversify voices, et cetera. But I do wonder sometimes is the value just kind of uh, constant violence, <laughs> environmental degradation? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe being a little bit silly now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true with the point about it's interesting the point about trying to put yourself out there. Um, in terms of, cause I do recall I was submitting uh, th- th- my last novel to um an independent press, but in terms of their submission guidelines, they were keen for people to have a certain online presence themselves. So to have that sort of um to have like a website or a social media presence, kind of ready to go that the person can kind of leverage towards kind of marketing and the the, the press themselves can leverage towards marketing the, the book if they're, they're trying to sell it. So it's, um, it's yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I suppose it's kind of, that's, that's just more irony involved in the whole thing, which is, you know, it's, it, it sounds kind of very adolescent to be making this complaint, but I think it's kind of, you know, um, it is supposed to be someone's experience, but then it's, you have to do all this other stuff. It's like, it's not, yeah, it seems like it's a good subject for an actual novel or a poem. <laughs> Just all this in the, yeah, like it's good. It, it is. It's fitting material, I think. You know, I'd I'd say yeah. I'm, I'm sure there are a few novels out there about novelists yeah. trying to get their stuff published. Um, we need to. We need to. We, we need to. We need to diversify kind of literary fiction with more novels about uh, frustrated English professors in London or New York. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're both published oh, yeah. on a Tuesday evening. <laughs> Yeah, frustrated literary students in Dublin. That that's never been done, right? <laughs> Probably has. I haven't read any of those books though. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it sounds familiar, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah. And um do you have kind of any um future kind of book plans or, or um, writing plans that you're kind of looking into at the moment? Not really. I would like kind of because it got like about well, probably 10 or 12 poems I'd be happy enough to get published. Mm. Um, I don't know what count, counts as a manuscript, but I suppose I'm still kind of trying to figure out what do I want out of, like, getting it published. Like, like part of me thinks it's just, you know, um, just do a collection and have my own little thing and give it to friends and stuff like that. Then another part of me is, no, I want fame, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Seamus Heaney or Ted Hughes or Sylvia Plath, like, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen anymore. Like, I think it's, those days are gone, I think. I imagine for poetry, it's extremely difficult to sort of, um, yeah, break into sort of semi kind of mainstream kind of awareness or, yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, like, it could be like the stand-up comedian thing where you get a bit of profile and then you just stop being a stand-up comedian and you're a TV personality, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I think well, stand-up comedy. Like, mystery train guy, yeah. I, I don't know if you yeah, stand up comedy. I mean, it used to be a jumping board into getting onto a sitcom, I think, but now it's probably, I suppose, maybe the Netflix special is maybe the, the whatever, the, the golden... Whatever. Yeah, the, the golden ticket or panel show, just being one of those people on a panel show, that'd be great. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's definitely beside the point. We're, we're, we've gone off piece here, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you can get onto a panel show, you can definitely leverage that to kind of sell it, flog your, uh, yeah. your book of poetry. <laughs> poetry, yeah. But uh, no, I, I I do think it's genuinely interesting thing though because it's the whole like what counts as poetry or what counts as sort of fiction or you know praiseworthy cultural work. It it does seem like just cultural values or culture war stuff is kind of like it's up for debate, like you know, and it's it's just it seems like when people talk about cultures in novels and fiction, and when people talk about culture war stuff, they they're talking about two completely different things, and I just think it's kind of an interesting disjunction like you know um, yeah I suppose culture if you're talking about culture wars like within you know if you're trying to put something out into the western canon I suppose it can it might people might feel it'll get some attention <laughs> yeah 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 well yeah it's, it's yeah I just think it's kind of 
when people talk about culture so much, it, it doesn't because it is like it's sort of a hot button topic, like you know, mm. or Michael D. Higgins or Aruna Malali is just talking about culture all the time. Mm. Um, but it doesn't seem as if it's that plugged in to what's traditionally regarded as culture, I think, when they talk about it. Mm. I suppose it's kind of like I think it's Mannix Flynn was the county councillor, the Dublin County Councillor, who kind of made the point that people were complaining about the Bernard Shaw closing down and the Bernard Shaw was a venue that was sympathetic to contemporary art. And mm. um, Flynn was sort of made the point that, well, look, nobody goes to Emma, you know? Mm. Um, and he was, he was sort of saying that, you know, we have networks set up for this, but just people don't seem to be interested in it. Like, so it's, yeah, there seems to be a mismatch between people's appetite for what they regard as culture and what's actually being supplied is new art and yeah. There have, yeah, there was um, a friend of mine, Gareth Sack, used to be quite involved with Exchange. I think it was called Exchange Dublin. It was around Temple Bar. And it was, yeah, it was kind of this center where people would kind of go in and, and engage in various sort of cultural activities or they'd have kind of things like evenings where people would read out kind of writing work or, or they do courses and things like that as well. A lot of kind of cultural kind of stuff happening. But yeah, he was, yeah, I think people were quite disillusioned when it, when it closed down. I mean, they did seem to have a certain level of engagement um, at that place. But um, yeah. yeah. It's just location and Emma is just a bad fit for it. Like I suppose it's going to kill me and it's not too far is pretty far out from town for a lot of people mm. yeah it's it's a it's a bit of a trip yeah yeah but then i mean yeah it was this this place yeah was was in temple bar but yeah it was sort of as far as i aware it was very much kind of a not-for-profit sort of place so it was quite um it was quite open and welcoming to people like there weren't many it was well located so it was it seems a pity i suppose people they didn't have a big marketing budget so it's not like it's not as if everyone knew about it but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. It's more like just a, an anarchist collective or something like that, subsidized mm. by Dublin City Council. Mm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know to what extent Dublin City Council was involved w- with it, or of what kind of capacity. But um, I did. They definitely they put some money in. Whether or not they're attached to that, though, is a, it's a good question. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's kind of it's the same thing of you know, what's the what's the venue or how do you want your work to be received? Is it always kind of you know? Yeah, the sort of open collective. It's it's hard to sort of put parameters on it. So it feels like kind of you know self publishing and things like that. Mm. That's a good question, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of whenever I do think about self publishing, I think you know it's it's at the moment sort of I, I know I said earlier that I was kind of happy enough to uh, think about self publishing, but it does feel like it's kind of it's a hard battle. You know, you kind of want that feedback from an editor or publisher, someone who's interested. I think. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, I suppose, going back to your question of sort of what are my plans for the future in terms of that. Yeah. So you're kind of exploring self-publishing. I suppose it can be tricky, like it can become a bit of a money pit if you're if you're looking to to hire an editor for, for your own work or then yeah. sort of get it printed or um yeah, if you don't, yeah, I suppose if you don't have the sort of the um let's say the momentum in terms of you know knowing whether people are going to buy it or not, yeah, it is quite risky if unless you've got money to burn, like. I suppose it's kind of, you know, even just like to have a, an editor, it's like that part would always be in the back of your mind going, you know, are they just being nice to me because I'm paying them or, you know, and if they weren't nice, you'd be kind of going, it was a bit harsh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hacky, you know what he's talking about, you know. Well, yeah, I suppose, yeah, an editor would have to, I mean, any editor would have to, to kind of ask you to change something like, or else they'd probably feel, even if they felt it was perfect, otherwise they feel yeah. that they weren't kind of yeah. earning, their, exactly. earning their keep. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I, I imagine most professional editors are very diplomatic, while also probably trying to get, <laughs> give a, a input. You need me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I suppose we probably we could probably wrap up soon. But um, I did want well, just maybe to finish like on a on a positive note. Like, is there any is there one piece that you've published that you're particularly proud of, or that that had a particularly positive bit of feedback from 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 somebody that wasn't your your ma or <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of like I've been kind of reluctant about sharing it because it does feel kind of weird. Like I have the two books, that the things are published. Um, I'm kind of just not really looking at them. It's like listening to yourself on a recording. It's excruciating for me. I think um, I'm way too sensitive about this. I think, which is again an ironic mixture in terms of the cynicism. Um, but yeah, no, like I've kind of written something about uh, tidying up a flat. It was kind of, it was a strange experience. It was just sort of like they kind of left in a hurry. Um, I suppose it's kind of that would be sort of the best thing I've done in terms of 
exploring and experience was troubling because when I was actually sitting down thinking about it, I was kind of thinking like, you know, this was like the people had left the flat about two months earlier. It was someone I know who owns a rental property and they've gone. But I was kind of thinking about it and going, Jesus, this was an eviction. <laughs> it was like, that's what that was like, you know, <laughs> and it's bald as yeah. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was, yeah, it was interesting. Like, I might send it on to you when I get a chance. But um, yeah. yeah, do do. Did you get some feedback on it or that you? Yeah, like they, they published it. They just said, yeah, that was that was an interesting piece. But it's kind of again, it's it's the attention economy. You know, it's kind of not many people are able to uh, seem to have the time to critique stuff. I think meaningfully. But yeah, yeah, I'll send it on. Cool, cool. So speaking of the the attention economy, I'll be hopefully uploading this soon into the the. Uh, the, the interwebs the world <laughs> so thanks um, very much for yeah thanks very much for joining was, was there anything else you wanted to add like just for the, no, the video just, itself? To, just to, because it's sort of things have been rattling around in my head like because it is something i know that like it's kind of on the one hand the material probably seems kind of cynical and hard-edged but then on the other i'm like jesus i'm very sensitive about it you know yeah well i suppose you you you, you're, you might be cos- cognizant of how people might uh, res- respond to your work yeah yeah, yeah. um how yeah. do you feel about it? Do you have similar things or are you kind of distanced and you're happy with it? Um, I suppose a lot of the, the work uh, that, that I do is perhaps quite transgressive sort of space and it's quite speculative as well. So it wouldn't be, there might be kind of elements of realism scattered here and there. But um, yeah, some of the work I, I do can be quite um, challenging to people just on a maybe emotional level or quite conf- confrontative. So it is something like with my previous novel, like the theme was kind of about mental health stigma and it's kind of vexed relationship with the psychological horror genre. So there's, you know, there is a lot of material in it that I feel people might kind of um, take quite badly if it were read out of context, yes. <laughs> so that's probably something that's probably a bigger concern rather than pop, what people will think of, of me personally. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Or rather taking the work and then perhaps feeling that I'm being in some way hateful or yeah. something like that. The material is sufficiently transgressive that you're not worried about them worrying about the quality of your soul or the beauty of your soul or something like that yeah or even the quality of the writing yeah yeah <laughs> i lost track of the technique like i was just yeah. uh, <laughs> american psycho <laughs> yeah. who cares about the craft anymore you've crossed yeah, the yeah. exactly <laughs> you so many clicks of outrage <laughs> so good talking andrew great i'll uh, i'll stop the recording here so uh yeah thanks Th- just to say thanks uh thanks to, to those uh watching don't forget to Oh, yeah. like and subscribe if that's uh, that's not too meta in the yeah, context yeah. of the interview thanks we'll uh, see you next time we should have a good few other uh, interesting uh, people to, to chat with us thanks yeah.